Alright, before we get to Hess's Law, we have a couple things that we need to uh, make clear that will allow us to use Hess's Law. So, when we're talking about the enthalpy change of a reaction, and we're comparing two different, uh, I guess you could call them forms of the reaction, they're not really two different forms. Um, if we have, uh, in this first example here, 2H2 plus O2 goes to two waters. If we take this reaction and we double it, if you remember from the last video, we talked about how enthalpy is extensive. Um, more specifically, enthalpy is directly proportional in how it changes. So if we double the amount of stuff that's reacting, we get double the enthalpy change. And this is true for no matter the reaction, whatever the reaction is, it's always going to be the case. Um, and so in this case, because we started with 480 kilojoules being released, when we double that, it becomes 960. So if we double the, uh, the reaction, the amount of stuff that's reacting, we get double the enthalpy change. Similarly, if we take a reaction and we flip it, so the stuff that was a reactant now is a product, and the stuff that was a product is now a reactant. What we do is we simply flip the sign of the enthalpy. Because essentially all we're doing is just changing the direction that the reaction is moving. We're not actually changing the starting and ending points from what they were before um, in terms of their absolute values. We're just flipping the starting and ending points. And so instead of going from here and going to there, now we're just starting up here and going to here. The overall distance between the two is exactly the same. It doesn't care which direction you're moving in. Uh, the sign is just indicating uh, if you start at the bottom or did you start at the top. So if we flip a reaction, that reverse reaction will have the exact same enthalpy value, just opposite in sign as compared to the previous one. So, with that in mind, there was a scientist named Hess, who I don't really know anything about, but I know that he developed uh, Hess's Law. Uh, and Hess's Law states that you can find the enthalpy change of a reaction by taking other known reactions and adding them together. So because enthalpy is a state function, we don't care what the process is to get from reactants to products. So we could have a whole jumble of reactions, and as long as overall the reactants going to products is the same as the reaction that we're interested in, we can do any combination of reactions we want, add them all together, and the resulting uh, addition of enthalpies will also give us the correct enthalpy. And again here the key is that uh, the enthalpy is a state function. The, the process in the middle doesn't matter. All that matters is where did you start and where did you end. So if that doesn't make uh, complete sense it should make more sense as we do a few examples here. So in this particular uh, example we are trying to find the enthalpy change for this reaction. Two carbons plus O2 goes to two carbon uh, monoxide. We want to know the enthalpy change for this reaction, but we don't know it. We don't know that enthalpy change, but we do know the enthalpy change for these two reactions. And so what we're going to do is we are going to manipulate these two reactions to try to produce this reaction. And if we can accomplish that, then by doing the same thing with the enthalpies, we will get the correct enthalpies for this unknown reaction. So if I take a look at the two reactions that I'm given here, I want to manipulate these two reactions so that when I add them together, I get this. When I look at my goal equation here, I need two carbons on the left side of the reaction. When I look at the equations that are provided to me, this is the only reaction that has just carbon. The carbon is on the left side, so that's good. 
but I only have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this entire reaction by 2. I can do that. It's perfectly fine. I can't just multiply the carbon. That is not fine. If I need to get two carbons, that means I need to get two of everything. Everything gets multiplied by 2. That also means that I need to multiply the enthalpy by 2 as well. Because whatever change I make to the reaction, I'm going to make the same change to the enthalpy. The next thing that I'm going to look at here is that I need two carbon monoxides on the right side. I'm ignoring the oxygen for now because the oxygen shows up in more than one place here. Um, so I'm going to focus in on the carbon monoxide first because it only shows up here. However, this carbon monoxide is on the wrong side of the reaction. I need two carbon monoxides on the right. This carbon monoxide is on the left. But, never fear, if you remember, we can flip a reaction. And so if I flip this, it will become 2CO2 goes to 2CO plus O2. And actually, let me write that up here. Be a little bit easier to see if I put it over here. So 2CO2 goes to 2CO plus O2. All right, so because I flipped this reaction, so I no longer have this reaction, now I have this one, I also need to change the sign on this. So this is now positive. Sorry, it looks kind of messy, but hopefully you can tell it's, it's positive now. So it's now positive 566. All right, so I've manipulated both of these uh, equations. I haven't done anything with the oxygen yet, but I don't have any other reactions to work with. And if I try to mess with the oxygen at this point, um, I'm just going to mess up the other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add them together and see what I end up with, because maybe the oxygen will work out on its own. So adding them together, all I'm going to do is just literally everything that's on the reactant side put together, everything that's on the product side put together. However, if something shows up on both sides, so you have something on the reactant side and on the product side, it's just like a mathematical equation and that, that will cancel out. So for example here, I have two carbon dioxides on the left, the reactant side, and I have two carbon dioxides on the right, the product side. So those cancel each other out. In the same way, I have two O2s on the left, and then one O2 here. So I'm not going to cancel out all of these, but I am going to lose one of that. So I only have one O2 left here. And so what I'm left with then is two carbons plus O2 goes to 2CO. Which, if you look, is the goal equation that I was trying to create. So, Hess's law tells me then, because adding the two equations together gives me the correct equation, adding the enthalpies together will give me the correct enthalpy as well. So if I go ahead and add the enthalpies together, uh, I have negative 393.5 times 2 plus 566. I get, for my enthalpy value here, negative 221 kilojoules. All right. Let's do another one. So now I'm trying to make acetylene. So I have two carbons plus hydrogen goes to C2H2. I want to make this equation, which I, I don't know what the enthalpy change is for this. I'm trying to create it from these known equations. So once again, it's going to be a lot easier for me if I look for the stuff that only shows up in one place. And in this case, all three of the things in my uh, 
my goal equation only show up in one place. So uh, the carbons. I need two carbons on the left side. This is the only reaction that has pure carbon, and I only have one on the left side. So just like in the last example, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by two, including the enthalpy. H2. I need one H2 on the left side of my reaction. This is the only place that H2 shows up. This doesn't count because it's in a, it's in a molecule. That's H2O. This is the only H2 in any of the possible reactions that I have here. It is on the left side, which is good, but I have too many. But never fear. We can multiply everything in this reaction by one half, which is to say we can divide by two. So this will just become one. This will be one half of an oxygen and this will become one. And if you're worried about having half of an oxygen here, don't worry, it will uh, it'll fix itself in just a minute. So for now, we're going to go ahead and let it have a fractional coefficient. If you get to the end of the problem and you end up with a fractional coefficient, then that's, a, that's an issue. But we're in the middle of the process now, so it's OK to have it there for now. So I'm going to do the same thing here, multiply my enthalpy by one half. So then the last thing in my goal equation, the C2H2, I need one C2H2 on the right side of the equation. My equation that's given to me, everything is wrong. I have two C2H2s and it's on the left. So what I need to do is I need to, again, multiply everything by a half and flip everything, which is perfectly fine. I can do both functions at the same time. And so if I do that, if I flip and divide by two, or multiply by half, it's the same thing, I'm going to end up with a single water plus two CO2 goes to two and a half oxygens plus a single C2H2. And so if I do the same thing to the enthalpy here, it will become positive and I will multiply it by a half. So I've flipped it, flipped its sign, and multiplied by a half. All right, so then if I add all of those together, Whew, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay, so if I check for stuff that's on the left, I have two carbons. There's no carbons to cancel it out on the right. So I can go ahead and put that down. I have one hydrogen here on the left side. There's no H2 on the right to cancel that out. So I'll go ahead and write that down. I have on the left side two O2s here and a half of an O2 here. So that gives me two and a half O2s on the left and I have two and a half O2s on the right. What do you know? It fixed itself. Uh, if I check the... yeah, so this, this whole thing. should have crossed that out a second ago. So this was the, the new equation from this. Uh, I have H2O on the left here. I have one H2O on the right. Those cancel out. I have two CO2s on the left. I have two CO2s on the right. Those cancel out. And so then the only thing I have left is the C2H2. And if you check, that does indeed match the goal equation that we were trying to create. And so because adding the equations together gives us the correct uh, equation, adding the enthalpies together will give us the correct enthalpy. And so if we add those together real quick, 2600 times a half plus 
negative 393.5 times 2 plus negative 561.6 times a half. Delta H for this reaction is positive 232.2 .2 kilojoules. All right, one more, I believe. Uh, yes, just one more. So we have, again, a uh, combustion type reaction. So we want to try and find everything in our goal reaction in the reactions that are given to us. Um, so the first molecule here, which is propane, we need one on the left side. We're given one on the right side here, so we need to flip this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now we did not need to multiply that by anything, we just needed to flip it. I'm going to go ahead and mark this one out so we don't get confused by it later. So we're going to do the same thing here with uh, the enthalpy, we're just going to flip the sign. So now it's positive, 103.9. Oxygen, I'm not going to mess with right now, because you can see here oxygen shows up in more than one place. So I'm going to bet that it works itself out in the end, but the CO2 only shows up here. I need 3 on the right side for my goal equation, so I'm going to multiply this whole reaction by 3. Same thing with the next one here. I need four waters on the right side. I only have two in this reaction. So I'm going to multiply everything here by two, which gives me four of that, two of that, and four of that. Okay. So if I go ahead and check what I have, I have C3H8, which is propane. That has nothing to cancel it out on the other side. I have three carbons here, three carbons there. So those cancel each other out. I have five O2 on the left side here, and no O2 on the right side. So I have 5O2. I have 4H2 here and 4H2 here. So those cancel each other out. And then I have 3CO2. No CO2 on the left side to cancel it out. And 4 waters with no waters on the left side to cancel it out. So once again, it matches my goal equation, and so adding together the enthalpies will also give me the correct enthalpy. So if I do that real quick, I have positive 103.9 plus negative 393.5 times 3 plus 561.6, and oh, I forgot to do the, uh, that should be multiplied by 2. That gives me, and uh, nope, I did something wrong there. Hold on. So that is far too small. So I forgot to include my negative sign when I was doing my calculation. Let me fix that real quick. All right, so that plus negative 561.6 times 2. Much better. Okay. You have to watch for things like that. They will get you. So that is a negative 2,000 uh, and essentially 200 kilojoules. It's a negative 2,199.8, which I'll just round up to 2,200. All right. So hopefully you are uh, at least a little bit comfortable 
with Hess's law using given equations to find unknown uh, enthalpy values. Just so you know, um, you will never be expected to look up the equations. Uh, these equations will always be given to you. So you will always have all the equations that you need, and you will never have more equations than you need. I'm not going to try and pull a fast one and like give you an equation that's not useful. You will have the equations you need, no more, no less. All right, uh, in the next, and I believe last video, oh, actually, quick before. Um, so this this uh, page here is essentially just a, uh, a summary of what we were just doing. Um, so this is a step-by-step -step summary of what we just did, um, talking about flipping the equations if you need to, multiplying the equations if you need to, add everything up, and making sure that it matches. Um, so this is just kind of a, uh, a nice little uh, slide here when you're working through homework to, to remind you what you can do. All right, so in the last video, which will be the next video, we'll talk about a different method for determining the uh, enthalpy of reaction using tables of data instead of uh, given reactions. So I will see you in the next and last video.